poetry of music and meditation, of meditation. Traherne, Thomas Traherne's bells, hark, hark, my soul, the bells do ring, and with a louder voice call many families to sing. His public praises and rejoice, their shriller sound doth wound the air, their grosser strokes affect the ear, that we might thither all repair. And more divine ones here, if wifeless earth can make such mirth, what then shall souls above the starry sphere? <laughs> Bells are but clay that men refine and raise from duller ore. Yet now, if as if they were divine, they call whole cities to adore. Exalted into steeples, they disperse their sound, and from on high, chime in our souls they every way speak to us through the sky thy iron tongues do utter songs and shall our stony hearts make no reply from darker minds and earthly caves that we last let souls awake and leaving their obscure graves from lifeless bells example take Lift it above all earthly cares, let them, like these, raised up on high, forsaking all the baser wares of dull mortality. His praises sing and tunably ring in a less distance from the peaceful sky. Part 2. From Clay and Mirror and Dirt, my soul, from Vile and Common Ore. Thou must ascend, taught by the toll, in what fit place thou mayst adore, refined by fire, then shall a bell of praise become in metal pure. In purity thou must excel, no soil or grit endure. <laughs> refined by love <laughs> thou still above like them must dwell in other souls allure those bells are of a peace and sound his whiter mouths declare our duty to us for being round and smooth and whole no splinters are him no cracks no holes no flaws that may let out the spirits hence too soon, that would harsh jarring cause. <coughs> and lose their influence, we must unite if we delight, would yield or feel any ex excellence. <laughs> Shake off thy sloth, my drowsy soul, awake with angels sing unto thy king, the pleasant music make, thy lute, thy harp, or else thy heart strings take, and with thy music let thy sense awake. Uh -huh. They're kind of wake up themselves with the bells here. Uh -huh. We're going to re read it here with comment and analysis. Uh -huh. Another treatment of bells invi invites comparison here, not because of the identification of sounding bodies, though in human frame is laid out system, system, schematically, but rather because of the way in which, Daddy, which it is left implicit. This is analysis. Uh -huh. this is yeah, but he has a different tone when he's doing analysis. Uh -huh. <laughs> he's like a, a grumpy professor, I see. Part one of Thomas Tahern's bells begin with a consideration of the soul's response to completely exterior separate bells, but moves rapidly towards a metaphorical comparison. I'm reading the poem again with commentary. Hark, hark, my soul, the bells do ring, and with a louder oh. voice. What? What is nine? Hark, hark, my soul, the bells do ring, and with a louder voice call many families to sing this poem public praises, his public praises, and rejoice. Their shriller sound doth wound the air, their grosser strokes affect the ear, that we might thither all repair, and more divine ones hear. If life was earth can make such earth, what then shall souls above the starry sphere? Bells are but clay that men refined and raised from duller ore. Yet now, if they were divine, they call whole cities to adore. 
Exalted into steeples, they disperse their sound, and from on high chime in our souls. They every way speak to us through the sky. Thy iron tongues do utter songs, and shall our stony hearts make no reply? From darker winds and earthly caves at last let souls awake and leaving their obscure graves from wifeless bells example take lifted above all earthly cares let them like these raised up on high forsaking all the baser wares of dull mortality his praises sing tunably ring in a less distance from the peaceful sky from thomas tarn the poems of felicity the opening stanza of the second part of the poem elaborates the notion of the refining of the ore and the casting of the bell as a version of temperament and tuning. He's saying like refining the ore and casting the bell is like refining your tuning <laughs> to get tuned up. <laughs> From clay and mirth and dirt, my soul, from vile and common ore, thou must ascend, taught by the toll. In what fit place thou mayst adore, refined by fire, thou shalt a bell of praise become. Are we supposed to become like a bell, tuned up bell? I don't know, if you listen to the bells and the music of the spheres, let's say you listen to cosmic bells, do you become a bell? <laughs> mm -hmm. No, you just hear the bells. You just hear it? But if you get uh, refined, in purity, thou must excel. You would become purified from the bell. Yeah, when you hear the sound through your ear, mm. it comes from within the master, right? Mm. So it is like an instrument. The metal pure, in purity, thou must excel no soil or grittender. Mm. Refined by love. He's not talking about refining a, a physical bell says it's refined by love, thou still above. Uh -huh. How do you refine a bell through love? Uh -huh. Like them must dwell, and other souls of her. Uh -huh. the, the souls, you mean. The souls' bells. Uh -huh. Amid other scripture references to refining fires, lurks the suggestion of Corinthians 1, 13, 1. Quote, through, though I speak with the tongues of men and angels and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. He's saying, uh, if you don't have love, you're just making a bunch of racket. <laughs> the basic comparison between the clay uh, into which the divine breath infuses life and the ore smelted and tempered into a sounding bell operates ironically against the sounding brass of vain prayer. The implicit metaphor, as some would have it, dead metaphor, of the tongues of bells is here revive, revive, revivified. Uh, and the final stanza of part two brings in a reference to harmoniousness and wholeness that is perfectly in keeping with other poets' use of the organic, organic instrument metaphor. Here's a poem quote. Those bells are of a piece and sound whose wider mouths declare our duty to us. Being round and smooth and whole, no splinters are in them, no cracks, no holes, no flaws that may let out the spirits hence too soon. That would harsh jarring cause and lose their influence. We must unite if we delight, would yield or feel or any excellence. <laughs> That's Traherne, Thomas Traherne. 
The bells that summon all in the beginning of the poem to public prayer at the end of it are brought round to be summoners of unity again, but in a very different sense, the excellent possibilities for metaphorical elaboration of the bell metal as tempered substance are obvious throughout, as in the wonderful series of uses of above, ranging from the bell's actual elevation in a belfry to the relative heights, interesting that they put the bell at the top of the church, of nobility of base metals to baser earth or ores, and finally to the heaven-earth relationship, and at the very end, the notion of sin as flaw, as perfectly contained in the conceit. It is sounding true that is predicated, finally, of both the well-tempered bell and the devout praying soul. Do you think a well-tempered, tuned-up bell is similar to a devout praying soul? The body-soul relationship is made almost an evolutionary one in that the soul is seen as being cast from refined and smelted, tempered, and tuned from a coarser clay. Traherne, he's a mystical poet of Englishmen, is elsewhere able to make use of the more conventional image of the stringed instrument as in the second strophe of On Christmas Day. Poem quote. Shake off thy sloth, my drowsy soul awake, with angels sing, unto thy king and pleasant music make. Thy lute, thy harp, or else thy heart strings take, and with thy music let thy sense awake. Uh -huh. hmm. Trahern is elsewhere capable of mean, meaning by music, merely a pastime or a distraction. Hmm. But here he says on Christmas Day, you should shake off thy sloth, my drowsy drought soul awake, with angels sing unto thy king, and pleasant music make thy harp, thy lute, thy harp, or else thy heart strings take. You can actually just take your heart strings. Mm -hmm. And with thy music, let thy sense awake. Uh -huh. Music is here, as elsewhere, the harmonious utterance of prayer. It is interesting to note that the heart strings are included in the list of stringed instruments, as if they completed the triad that moved from the secular lute to the harp of David, to the final and most spiritual instrument of all, the sense of the medieval pun, or cor cordis, and corda, which would make heart strings redundant, seems to be missing here completely. Hmm. We are reading the poetry of Thomas Traherne in the chapter on uh, Music of Meditation. The Music of Meditation from the book The Untuning of the Sky. <clears throat> But once they bring, bring back oh, the study of poetry and literature to the universities and the people listen to the music of the spheres and regain their reason, they can start studying this again. Huh? <clears throat> 